Okay. Hi, this is Mark Arnold with another episode of Fun Ideas Podcast. Today I have another Bear Manor Media author because I put the word out to Ben Omar at Bear Manor Media. And I got Paul April here who has written a book about uh, the weirdest concept possible, I think, uh, the filmmaker Ed Wood and a, a film he was going to make about football. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess before you talk about the book itself, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how it came about writing such a book project. Well, um, man, I don't know where to start. I mean, uh, ever since I was a teenager, I was always a fr- uh, uh, fan of Ed Wood. Um, it all started with the, for me, with the uh, Tim Burton movie with starring Johnny Depp that came out in the mid 90s. Um, And I was already kind of primed to be into uh, cult movies and classics and things like that uh, because I'd just always been interested in movies um, my whole childhood. Mm -hmm. But um, something as weird and wacky as Ed Wood had never really uh, crossed my path before. Um, So it started there. And then uh, I've always been interested in writing. I, uh, you know, used to write uh, freelance movie reviews and, uh, 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 and, um, I'm, uh, an advertising copywriter now. Um, so I, you know, do that for a career and, um, really it, um, all happened during the lockdown, uh, during the pandemic, I had a lot more time on my hands, um, to actually pursue, you know, uh, uh, ideas uh, instead of kind of having them and then forgetting about them or being you know too busy once I got home from work or whatever I was working from home so I had a lot of time to you know do, do side projects and 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 things and um, this the existence of this um, screenplay that had never been produced before came to my attention via a blog um, that I read uh by joe blevins called um well the blog is called dead to rights but uh there's a the portion of it a large portion of it is called uh, ed wood wednesdays where he updates uh almost every wednesday something ed wood related <laughs> so that blog had been on my radar for a couple of years but um i happened to run across a few articles about or an article about this screenplay that happened to mention sort of off the cuff that the screenplay was available in the uh, Loyola Marymount University archives. And um, that surprised me because no one had ever written about it before. As far as I knew, no one had ever read it. None of the books about Ed Wood that I had read mentioned it. Um, And so I thought it was strange that um, a fairly exhausted, you know, uh, figure in filmmaking um exhaustively researched I should say um had an entire screenplay that was just sitting there that no one had bothered to take a look at yet so again because of uh, having some more time on my hands I was able to reach out to the library and um because everything was locked down they were willing to send a copy um and so I was able to read it and, and everything without having to go down physically to the archives, which I think I might have maybe have had to do if the world had been operating normally. Um, right, right. Uh, I, I think they have some policies. They'll send you like a, a portion of something for research purposes. But um, because of the state of the world at the time, they sent me the whole thing, which surprised me. And um, a, a friend of mine was also researching it at the time, uh, a guy named Greg Javer, who um, also writes for that same blog that I was telling you about a moment ago. Um, So he and I were going back and forth about the screenplay and the possibilities of where it came from or why it existed or, you know, and um, initially my thought was, you know, it might turn into a blog post. And then I thought maybe a magazine article or a website article or something. And uh, the more, I kept on, you know, taking notes and thinking about it and discussing it. Uh, the more I realized it could just be an entire book. So that's where the book came from. Now, now what does the screenplay consist of? Is, is it literally just a finished script 
that it's in the final stages and the next step would have been Ed Wood producing this film or well uh no not exactly um, okay <laughs> it is the first draft of okay. uh screenplay and um um however uh so normally you'd, you'd have like a shooting script or something after several right. drafts were written uh i my guess is that this is the first and well the cover yeah, I can show you a book. <laughs> well, I can show you the screenplay cover. Oh, the screenplay cover. Okay. It says uh, first draft on it. Okay. And uh, I'm guessing it was the only draft. And <laughs> um, but so this production was going to be a little bit different because we do know through um, some newspaper articles that there there was a production company that was actually um, uh, scouting locations for the movie. So it looked like they were going to go from first draft to shooting the movie. <laughs> um uh but then nothing ever happened and i don't know what the story there is um ed wood would not have been involved beyond writing it it was just a work for hire uh he would he was known to write everything from uh, magazine articles to novels to screenplays within the span of a couple days sometimes and so someone might say write me a screenplay for three hundred dollars and then he would do it you know <laughs> Okay, um, so it wasn't one of his like pet projects that he would direct and cast his usual uh, set of actors and things like that, like you see in the Ed Wood film. Uh, uh, no, this would thing. not have been uh, one of those ones. And that's actually what, one of the things that made it so interesting to me mm -hmm. was that it was such a strange subject for Ed Wood to be writing about. Right. Um, just so everyone knows, it's the true story of Notre Dame legendary Notre Dame coach Frank Leahy um, who uh, was a uh, his mentor was the even more legendary Notre Dame coach um, Newt Rockney uh, and um, as far as uh, anyone knows Ed had no interest in sports let alone football <laughs> and um, so it wasn't just a work of hire work for hire it was a work for hire on a subject that um as far as anyone knows, he didn't know anything about and didn't care about, uh, as opposed to what he usually would write, which is stuff that, you know, reflects his uh, interests, like, you know, monster movies, sci-fi movies, um, you know, crime, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it almost, it just seemed so weird. I had to see it with my own <laughs> eyes to believe it. And sure enough, uh, the other thing is, um, you know, he's done a ton of work for hire, or he he had done a ton of work for hire during his life, and um, it ranged from all kinds of subjects, and he always managed to get, or almost always managed to get something of his own personal, you know, quirks or style or something <laughs> into the story, um, and so part of the fun of reading the screenplay was to see if he was able to do any of that with the true life story of a uh, of a football coach and there is a little bit here and there hmm. how does it i assume you dissected it and read through it completely and everything in your book i mean how, how does it work as a screenplay i mean leave out the ed wood part because you know it does is it you know uh suitable is it like well written or talk about uh, it a little bit okay well it's so it, it's um it's good and bad at the same time. <laughs> um, being a first draft and uh, being written in what seems like kind of a marathon writing session, I don't know for sure. But from what we know about um, the way Ed Wood used to write and um, from what I know about writing in general and from what I know about reading the screenplay, uh, uh, it seems like uh, it was written in a few sittings and so you can kind of see where there are sections where he's fresh and ready to go and um, <laughs> everything is detailed and, and uh, fleshed out and, and stuff. And then uh, stretches where it seems like he's running out of steam and kind of mm. uh, going on autopilot and skimming over stuff and just trying to get through, you know. Uh, interesting thing is the screenplay is actually based on a book. And the book, um, 
which I have a copy here. So he was adapting a book essentially. Okay. And, so um, at least you had a little assistance there. He didn't have to go completely blind on a subject. He didn't know anything about about a person he might not have even known anything about. And so right. he had a little bit of something to work with. I guess that makes it a little bit better, I suppose. Yeah. So sometimes you can tell he has uh, kind of read the book and constructed sequences based on an attempt to to make a cinematic adaptation. Mm -hmm. Um you know, reordering scenes or um, the way he treats characters or whatever. Uh, but then uh, you get certain sequences or stretches of of the adaptation where you feel like he's just going through the book as quickly as possible, you know. <laughs> um, so it kind of goes both ways. As far as like whether it's any good or not, um, it is, uh, first of all, it's a first draft. So I, I don't think it very rarely is a first draft, you know, good, but, um, in my experience, yeah. uh, uh, but on top of that, um, it is kind of old fashioned. Um, so it was, this was written in, um, I think 73. Yeah. That was one of my questions. Just when yeah. in the timeline of Edward's life, where does this kind of fit in? <laughs> yeah, so. It's actually, that was a little bit off. It's actually, um, 75. Um, and okay. he died in 78 at the age of okay. 54 so it was um so he wasn't old but he was close mm -hmm. to the end of his life um and it was past his um whatever the most successful quote-unquote you know stretch of his career would have been which would have been like the 50s basically right um so uh he uh, wrote it in the late 70s or mid 70s and it is kind of uh written reminiscent of the kind of biopics you would have seen in like the you know 40s um like, like Newt, uh Newt Rockney All-American that time yeah <laughs> yeah oh that's a perfect yeah, <laughs> a, a directly related um uh movie but so yes it's like that or um oh man I forget the one with Gary Cooper what oh uh yeah uh, the Pride of the Yankees yeah Pride of the Yankees yeah, uh... that kind of movie um yeah. which would have seemed very out of place in kind of the uh you know gritty 70s uh uh world but um uh, you know they're kind of the renaissance that was going on in hollywood at the time um so it's a little old-fashioned well would he have uh assuming he lived and everything a few years longer and everything would he have seen any sort of residual or asked to work on this film at all or is it just i wrote this i'm done i'm on to my next assignment whatever that is well um there's a little bit of speculation there <laughs> i think it's just that he wrote it and he wouldn't have been involved in it um now there were some things that he wrote uh in the 60s and 70s where he was um not the director, but he was on set as like an assistant director or like a, you know, secondhand man to the director or, you know, um, so it wouldn't have been, you know, completely impossible that that might've happened. Um, but that was usually when he had like a close relationship with um, the, the person that he was writing the movie for, where I don't get the impression that was the case. Um, with this one so i think that if they had gone to shoot it they probably he probably wouldn't have been in a hands-on capacity mm -hmm. and to your knowledge i mean how how did he come by his various writing assignments at that time well so that involves a little speculation also okay um, <laughs> <laughs> because i like nowadays i mean you can get things on the internet you can you know, but I don't know. But I don't even know how people got assignments. I guess you wrote letters to the mail or called people or knocked on doors or something. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it for Ed was um, like uh, networking, <laughs> which, uh, uh, you know, who you know and uh, who you bother and uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, he still had some context from his days. He is, you know, more successful at producing independent uh you know, B movies uh, or Z movies or whatever you want to call them <laughs> uh, on the fringes of Hollywood um, and, you know, rub shoulders with um, some or some, you know, celebrities like Bela Lugosi being the most famous one. 
or like uh he knew some guys like uh this b movie western actor kenny duncan who isn't a household name but he's in hundreds of movies and, um so you know he had a big group of friends like that um and they know people and they know people and um but uh, a couple of the things he did was he worked for a um publishing house called pendulum for a guy named uh, bernie bloom and basically it was this office that churned out um tons of adult magazines and adult novels um and wood was like a staff writer there uh so he would just sit in a cell and churn out you know thousands and thousands and thousands of words of of adult stuff for these books and <laughs> magazines and uh bloom's son noel bloom was um kind of spearheading the uh filmmaking part of that enterprise and this is a little earlier in the 70s late 60s early 70s um uh getting into making you know adult film loops they were just like you know a couple minutes long and ed made a feature or at least a couple features for them that were among the last things he really directed mm -hmm. um but uh, so, you know, he got jobs through them. He knew a guy named Stephen Apostoloff, who was a, also made adult movies, but they were a lot softer. They weren't the hardcore stuff. They were just, you know, topless women and stuff. And, um, you know, he would write for him a lot. And, uh, but, you know, uh, one thing he did have going for him, sort of, was um, that he ha was kind of an acquaintance of um Forrest J a Ackerman or is it oh. Ackerman or Ackerman I feel Ackerman like yeah from Ackerman. famous monsters yeah yeah famous <laughs> monsters of film land and um uh he um was a literary agent of sorts for um a bunch of sci-fi authors yeah and um he was kind of at one point sort of Ed Wood's uh, literary agent and um you don't get from, you know, the way he talks about Ed Wood and stuff, you don't get the impression he took him very seriously. <laughs> but um, there's, you know, one novel Ed wrote has an introduction by Forrest J. Ackerman. And um, so he probably had some connections through him. And this specific screenplay was based on a book written by a guy named, uh, man, you think I would know this since I wrote the book? Or the... <laughs> That's okay. You know, I write books myself, and you know, <laughs> after I write a book, people ask me well, questions from it, and I go, I don't remember. It's like, well, you wrote the book. It's like, well, that's why I wrote the book, so I have a place to look it up. When I <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, so the book, the screenplay was based on was by a guy named Bernie Williams, uh -huh. and Bernie Williams' name has turned up in um, a few sci-fi magazines of the era as some kind of like associate editor or, or something like that some kind of byline like that and so there is some speculation that um bernie williams may have heard of ed wood through forrest ackerman or through other acquaintances in the sci-fi short story writing world because mm -hmm. uh apparently a tons of those guys uh made money on the side writing adult books that you know stuff that doesn't really there's no market for it anymore but back then there was you know right. a huge paperback market mm -hmm. now um this is a silly question because you already said he put his kind of um his own twist on things and everything but uh all these different projects i won't just pigeonhole this one is do you assume ed wood actually wrote these things that he didn't uh have another person working for him to just churn out material or uh no he uh, almost on 99.9999 percent positive that he wrote uh everything that's attributed to him okay. and more that's not attributed to him it's actually more commonly the other way around that um yeah. there's there's stuff being dug up all the time that is clearly written by ed wood right. that no one knew about because it's under a pseudonym or or whatever yeah. I, see. I I did wonder when I first heard of the screenplay, the thought crossed my mind that it could just be some other guy named Ed Wood, and it's yeah. not really. Um, but actually, there's a 
well, first of all, when you read it, it's clearly Ed Wood, but, um, <laughs> and, and the copy I got actually has his, um, signature on the cover. Okay. That, yeah. Um, but Confirm, beyond yeah. that, beyond that, he, um, at one point, um, uh, there's a filmmaker named Fred Olin Ray who, um, when he was a teenager, uh, wrote Ed Wood uh, uh, some fan letters and, and was going to um, maybe try to produce a movie with Ed Wood. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, Ed Wood uh, typed out a resume for, for him in one of the letters. And so that resume has made it into, you know, magazine articles and stuff. And um, it's one of the only places this screenplay is listed. So... Uh -huh. So not only is it clearly written by him and his his signature is on it, but on top of that, he put it on his own resume, which is an exhaustive resume of uh, all this stuff that he uh, he wrote over the years. But yeah. anyway. Which leads me to wonder, are there more things like this? Or is this a, like a, just a fluky thing that you just happen to find? Well, um it seems like stuff is turning up all the time. I, there's nothing that I know of right now that's, um, well, that may not be totally true. There's a, <laughs> maybe a couple things um, that are coming up that I might not be at liberty to discuss right now because they're not my projects. But Yeah, that's fine. Um, but, <laughs> but um, uh, you know, there's always stuff that pops up. Like uh, when um, uh, Rudolph Gray wrote the biography of Ed Wood called Nightmare of Ecstasy, that the film the Tim Burton movie is based on mm -hmm. and um that movie came out in the early 90s mm -hmm. and he did a ton of research uh for that that book and um uncovered things in there that no one knew like uh the the adult movies that Ed Wood made um in the late 60s and early 70s and had a big long list of adult paperbacks that Ed had written and um uh, all, you know, a lot of that stuff was new to people. Like back then, when people just knew Plan Nine from Outer Space and right. <laughs> uh, Bride of the Monster and Glenn or Glenda, um, it was you know shocking to find what seemed like a mountain of material that. Um, and at that time, a lot of it was like stuff you couldn't see, or it was lost, or it was missing. Mm -hmm. And so, in the decades since then, every now and then something turns up. Like um, one of the last movies Ed ever made called take it out in trade um was missing for years and for for whatever reason someone had found the outtakes of that movie mm. which normally you would never find outtakes to a b movie made in the late 60s early 70s you know um i mean some of the some classics don't even have outtakes anymore because right. you know uh anyway for whatever reason they found the outtakes of this movie in like a projection booth or something and for a while, uh, people thought that was the only thing we were ever going to see. And then all of a sudden, it just popped up and came out on DVD, and now anyone can watch <laughs> it. Um, and similarly, there was a, a lot of confusion over another uh, adult movie that he might have made or uh, people talked about, but no one had ever seen, and that popped up. And mm -hmm. um, so there's always stuff getting dug up um and uh um i know some guys um that are digging into this whole publisher called france books um that had a bunch of adult novels in the in the 60s and 70s and there was a, a line in an interview somewhere that said edward worked for them mm. and so we were doing all this exhaustive research to see if we could figure out which one or ones of these books he may have written, you know, because mm -hmm. his name's not on any of them. And uh, so far, I don't think we've turned anything up. But there's things like that going on where you never know what's gonna what's gonna pop up. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like he's it's like a I like the the stuff that he made in the fifties is the tip of the iceberg, and then there's you know all this stuff underneath, right? Still getting dug up today. Is that book you mentioned that the Ed Wood uh, movie is based on, is that still kind of like the de definitive biography or has there been so much stuff come out that it's almost out of date or obsolete or. Well, uh, again, um, it's kind of both. Um, okay. <laughs> so, so it is. Um, so the, that book nightmare of ecstasy. Yeah. Uh, 
um, the the bulk of it is a kind of an oral history um, told by all these people who knew Ed Wood that the author interviewed in the 80s and when when they were all you know still around right and um and so because of that it has some conflicting stories and some tall tales and <laughs> you never know exactly what what's true what's not true um uh but that makes it an entertaining book um so that's the majority of the book and then the back of the book had all this exhaustive info like a bibliography of everything that they knew of that Ed wrote and uh, every movie that people knew of that he had had a hand in and so um so it was exhaustive in that sense and valuable because now a lot of those people aren't around anymore to tell these stories um but because of that then it perpetuated a lot of these legends um that aren't necessarily true about ed wood and the movies he made and um um the thing is is that tons of stuff tons of additional information has become available and fact checked and stuff about Ed Wood's life and the movies he made and the books he wrote, but there's no like one volume that uh, goes through all of it. Um, mm -hmm. So you still refer back to Rudolph Gray's book, even though it's <laughs> imperfect because no one else has really compiled everything. Mm -hmm. uh, he is rumored to have been working on a, re a new edition of it, but that, you know, they've been saying that for years and it hasn't seen the light of day yet. So I don't know what's going on with that. And there's a few books here and there that go into a couple things, but really uh, you have to look for stuff on people's blogs or, you know, internet groups and you know, stuff like that to really get the, the full story. Wow. I didn't know there's that much information to be had, but uh, I guess so. Um, now, uh, when, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I, I've seen the film, but I'm not saying that's the definitive story. And, and they kind of end it quickly saying, and he went on and did this, and that was the end of the movie. Yeah. In the times that he was uh, writing this book that you did the research on, um, what was Ed Wood's life like, to your knowledge? So um, in, the, in, the, in 1975, by then he was living in the last apartment that he would ever live in, which was on Yucca Street in, Los, in Hollywood, California. And it was in a very dangerous part of um, Hollywood. Um, to this day, it, it's a little sketchy, but back then it was a lot worse. Hmm. Um, uh, and uh, so he lived in a, a small apartment with his... Uh, uh wife Kathy and their dogs they had you know th two or three dogs and um uh you know they would still have uh friends over and and things like that but it was a pretty bleak uh existence uh, they had you know both gotten into uh extreme alcoholism and on the on the well I want to say on the verge of poverty I mean I would say they're poverty stricken and um with you know prostitutes and drug addicts and 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 people like that living in the same building as them and uh, apparently there was a situation where it was kind of okay when they first moved in and then went swiftly downhill when like uh the neighborhood changed a little bit but in any case they were never able to get out of there they they ended up getting evicted and ed died only a couple days after getting um evicted living at a friend of his house um so, uh, and that, that was a few years after he wrote this screenplay that we're talking about, but he was kind of in, in that, uh, in that mode when he <laughs> wrote this one, uh, things were going downhill. And then how did he finally pass away? Uh, he had a heart attack. Um, okay. but you know, he was extremely sick from having drank too much and all kinds of, uh, um, you know, malnutrition and mm. everything that comes along with not having any money and you know, still drinking and right. you, know, <laughs> you know homeless and all that kind of stuff right um but yes officially it was a heart attack okay and his wife what happened with her well she lived on until uh, boy the early 2000s i, I believe okay. i wish i knew the date but um you know 30 some yeah like 30 some years after ed and um okay uh didn't live in the same building but lived in an apartment building near where they had lived in kind of the same neighborhood 
Mm. Uh, and, um, and uh, she was able uh, through some acquaintances was able to um, get a little bit of money on the movie that or from the movie that was made about Ed Wood. Mm. Um, um, so that was good, but um, you know, nothing major or anything like that. Um, <laughs> she um, actually made friends with a guy named Bob Blackburn who mm. lived in the same building as her. And um, he, he was, uh, I mean, she would have been, you know, a senior citizen at the time. And he would have been, you know, younger than her, like in his thirties or forties or something. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. At the time that they met and um, he realized um, through a series of coincidences that she was Edward's widow mm. and um, helped her uh, find an entertainment lawyer and make sure she made some money off of the movie. And um, so as a result, when she passed away, she left her portion of the Ed Wood estate to what little there was to Bob Blackburn. And so he's kind of carried carried on the, the torch and has a like a Facebook group for fans and and stuff like that. And he um, well, actually he wrote the um, foreword to the book that we're talking about and um uh, he um, was involved a little bit in um, in in me uh, deciding to work on this and write it. Uh, I reached out to him and started chatting with him on on Facebook, and so he was able to fill me in on on a couple things here and there, what, mm-hmm. just what he knew from what Kathy had said about Ed and. Um, and stuff like that. So it was good to have kind of a spiritual connection to, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Ed via Bob and Kathy. Um, That's cool. Now, um, going the opposite side of the story here, um, I don't, I should have looked it up, but frankly, he, yeah. uh, was he still around when this uh, story was written or uh, was uh Ed just going solely on that big green book you held up. <laughs> yeah, he was he was going off of the book solely off the book. However, uh, the guy who wrote the book, Bernie Williams, uh, he met Leahy. He went out and interviewed Frank Leahy for the book, and and uh, actually the book. So it's kind of also kind of an oral history, although directly from Frank Leahy. Okay. It, it's written like he he. Bernie went and interviewed him and had all the tapes and then like kind of transcribed the tapes. Um, however, it doesn't really read like that. Um, <laughs> so there's some, you know, question as to whether Bernie made it all up or, or, you know, just rewrote it in such a way that it doesn't sound naturally mm-hmm. like some speaking or whatever, you know, but, um, but that's the, the story. That's the way the story goes. And uh, so it, the book itself uh, however, Frank Leahy died shortly after that. So the book itself and then the screenplay that Ed Wood wrote were shortly after Frank Leahy passed away. Okay. Yeah, I probably should have looked it up to see if he did, but uh, I was just curious if he, if Frank uh, saw what Ed wrote, apparently not. But, you know, it's like, had he, you know, he'd say, oh, what's this or something? I don't know. <laughs> um now, how is your book? I mean, I'll read the title here. We haven't said it to this point. It's called I Watch Football Early the Day I Died. Uh, let's talk about the title first. So what, is, what does that actually mean? So that title is kind of a double reference to a couple things uh, from the life and times of Ed Wood. Um, one of them is that uh, one of the last things Ed was working on when he passed away was a screenplay called I Woke Up Early the Day I Died. So the, <laughs> so the um the title of my book is partially a reference to that and then partially a reference to uh one of the few references to football you'll find it, when learning about Ed Wood is that um he was watching football the morning he died and he hated football according to his wife Kathy Wood. Mm-hmm. So I found it ironic that yeah. he had also written a screenplay about <laughs> football. Um, 
now again like with everything with that there's conflicting stories about whether he was just at a uh, apartment where other people were watching football or if there was lit- literally was watching football or if there's just a tv nearby with football but <laughs> in any case he sort of watched football early the day he died <laughs> I'm wondering, time, well you know even though you said it was done a few years earlier i'm just wondering if this experience for him piqued any sort of latent interest in football that more sports uh, you know just for casual fun i don't know you know well you know there's two things that are interesting about that one is that so even though i've laid it on pretty thick about how ed had no interest in sports or football um and how he was adapting a book one of the interesting things about uh reading the screenplay having read the book and the screenplay i can tell where there's information in the screenplay that was not in the book and i mean some of that is obviously just stuff that ed made up like there's just scenes that that are from his imagination but there's also things that are like um you know famous frank Leahy stories or anecdotes or notre dame facts or you know football players names or whatever Mm -hmm. that are correct but not in the book and so Mm -hmm. that means either he had more knowledge of the subject than i give him credit for or he did more research than you would think he would do. Mm-hmm. You know, I would think based on where he was in his life and the tales you hear about how he kind of did his thing, that he would have done the most cursory adaptation possible. Um, but it seems like he, um, even though there's parts where it seems like he was on autopilot, there's other parts where it's like he brings in anecdotes and things that are actually interesting, but weren't in the the book um and so i don't know if he had a stack of notre dame library books uh that he was getting <laughs> stuff out of or maybe the author of the book had additional material or something mm-hmm. but some x factor got a little bit more football stuff in there than was actually in the the material he was adapting well let me ask you a different question here um when he died, I mean, you talk about him being in not the best part of town and uh, not the best of circumstances, but was Ed Wood like a pack rat or it, like did he keep everything, mementos of all his career and everything like that, or did he have very little to show for anything when he passed? Um, not very much. He, um, I think if he had had his way, yes, he would have had all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, like one, there's stories like when he met uh, who he Kathy Wood, who he eventually married. One of the first things they did was go through his scrapbooks, and he he had scrapbooks that he had either made or someone had made for him, mm-hmm. with um, you know mementos of his career, or, you know plays he'd written, or things that were in newspapers, um, you know promotional stuff for his movies, all that kind of stuff. So he had that stuff. He kept all of his, um, he, you know, he would get an author's copy of everything he wrote and he would write, um, you know, personal library of Edward D. Wood Jr. in the title <laughs> page. And he had a whole shelf or maybe even a whole couple shelves full of his little novels and, um, you know, stuff some people might not have been proud of, but he just <laughs> had it right there. Right. And, um, you know, managed to hold on to a print of Plan 9 from Outer Space that he would show sometimes um and uh but uh sadly you know through moving a whole bunch of times and not not always moving under the best circumstances they lost a bunch of stuff and then especially towards the very end um i think they only left with like two trunks full of stuff Mm. and they lost a ton of stuff one of the things they lost that um that uh, you know really broke his heart was that he was working on a uh biography of Bela Lugosi Hmm. and they lost the manuscript now some there's some reports the manuscript might exist somewhere but the story goes that he lost it in the move when well when they got evicted and that that was really crushing for him but there's a lot of his novels survived because he gave them to a friend of his um to hold for him Um, and these two trunks survived that have turned up in like eBay auctions and things. So 
So some of that stuff has gotten out there, but uh, I think it's just a little, little sliver of what he would have liked to have kept probably, sadly. Yeah. Now, going back to your book here, um, uh, how is it laid out? I mean, uh, does it go page by page on the screenplay or is it just a general overview and you talk about his life or what, what do you, what do you, how do you go through it in the book? Uh, it, it's pretty much page for page. So the way it, it goes is there's a um, a foreword by Bob Blackburn, who knew Kathy Wood, and that kind of gives you a quick overview of um, what who Ed Wood is. And then there's an introduction by Greg Javer, uh, who uh, gives you a little idea of Notre Dame and um, uh, Frank Leahy. And then the bulk of the book is kind of a page by page commentary on the screenplay. And when I uh, thought about writing it, I thought I pictured it kind of like when you get a DVD or a Blu-ray and you listen to the commentary while watching the movie and it kind mm -hmm. of, you know, fills you in on stuff as you watch it. So I kind of wanted the screenplay to read um, that way. Mm -hmm. So it's not every single page, but, uh, Generally, it'll be, you know, screenplay page on one page and then my commentary on the facing page um, that ranges from just like fast facts on stuff or fact checking as the case may be if something's not quite right or fleshing things out or discussing the difference between the, the book and the screenplay or talking about why this is significant uh, in, you know, compared to Ed Wood's life or what we know about Ed Wood or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just kind of a running commentary to make the screenplay a little more interesting. Um, yeah, I've seen other screenplay books. Uh, a lot of them, um, well, obviously some are just there to reprint the screenplay, which is right. fine. Um, some are kind of like, there's a bunch of scrapbook stuff up front and then it just goes into the screenplay and the screenplay is just there. Yeah, And that's great too. But I kind of wanted it to be like a, a companion mm -hmm. during the screenplay. So, so you're like just, annotating it yeah what, all the way through and giving facts or something or a little more insight on a particular sequence or why this, why he would have written this or something like that yeah okay. exactly okay okay um and then uh basically uh do, do you put any of your own i guess you would uh, put your own spin on it to you know speculation about you know, what might have been or anything else. And also, I didn't know if you said, is there any other things that still exist, like the storyboard or anything like that? Or is it just this script, to your knowledge? Uh, to my knowledge, it is just the script. So you can still get the book that it's based on. You know, right, through, right. You yeah. can find a used copy somewhere. And it's also been republished um, over the years. But mm -hmm. um, the screenplay is about it. There's a couple articles that were dug up about the location scouting that I talked about earlier um, mm -hmm. that reference so like Scotty Williams em Enterprises or something was mm -hmm. scouting locations for a Frank Leahy motion picture. But um, that's about it. No storyboards. Although interestingly, the um, book it's based on has a bunch of cartoons in it. Mm -hmm. We tried to track down um, who drew the cartoons, but we couldn't figure it out. So... <laughs> And there's no credit in the book. That's well, there is. Uh, there's a like a single name, but we weren't able to figure it out based on uh, the the signature. You know, interesting. <laughs> um, so that was kind of strange, but um, but that's about it. Um, but yes, so so some of it, some of the commentary is um, opinion or my own guesses or insights or um, you know asides here and there, and the the ending uh, is. Um, through coincidence, I found out that uh, Frank Leahy had um, lived out the uh, end of his life in uh, Lake Oswego outside of Portland, Oregon. Mm. And um, I'm in Portland, Oregon. And so I found out that he is actually buried um, at a Catholic cemetery um, in Portland, Oregon. So mm. while I was working on all this, I was like, I could literally take a lunch break and go see his grave <laughs> so <laughs> i did and sure enough there it was frankly he portland oregon wow 
Yeah. Okay. So the so the the ending the epilogue of the book is uh, a story about me going up to find uh, his gravestone. Hmm. I'll probably have to take a trip, as you know or may not know. I'm also in Oregon too. I'm in Springfield, so you know. Yeah, I didn't realize. I just noticed yesterday. <laughs> So um, I'm originally from California, but, you know, it's like, you know, I moved up here about a decade ago and, you know, originally was in Eugene and then now Springfield. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, so you have this book um, before we talk about, you know, promotion and everything like that. What's your next project? Are you or is like one and done? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, this one was a long time coming because I mean, the actual work on this book was only you know, it came together pretty quickly. Um, but I've always wanted to write something or get something published, you know, almost as long as I can remember. And so I've had some, I've written, you know, a bunch of screenplays, a bunch of novels, you know, all kinds of stuff that um, hasn't been published. Um, and so on one hand, I could say all that stuff just helped me write the book that finally did get published. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, or, you know, it's all there and all that stuff could be the next thing that gets published, you know, mm -hmm. um, because of this, uh, you know, uh, having experience now and working with a publisher, I have some um, potential ideas uh, geared specifically towards um, the kind of stuff that might go well with this publisher, mm -hmm. um, entertainment uh, stuff, where actually... I have a couple Ed Wood ideas. I, you know, don't want to necessarily be the Ed Wood only author, but right. I already had a couple Ed Wood projects I was working on, and I uh, haven't worked on. So this book came out, uh, you know, back in June, mm -hmm. and uh, so since then I haven't done a ton of writing. But what little I have done, it has been on another Ed Wood project that I was working on. That's more fictional, so it would be more like a novel than a um uh nonfiction book like this one. So that's one potential one. Um I've also done a ton of film writing over the years and have a giant mountain of uh commentary on uh horror movies mm -hmm. that I sometimes threaten myself that I'm gonna get it all into shape and put it in one book. Um but I haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. <laughs> and then um kind of an idea potentially of a, kind of an overview of um all of Ed's uh, paperbacks, uh, not all of them, but uh, some of them, because they're hard to find. Um, and if you find them, they're expensive. Yeah. And um, if you then try to read them, they're hard to read for various reasons. So, um, <laughs> so I was thinking it would be nice to have a, a bibliography that kind of does the work for you and tells you about these things. I mean, there's other people on the internet that already do that kind of thing, but it would be nice to have it in a book. Although there's also been kind of books like that, but I mean, kind of a more, um, a more in-depth book, but I haven't even started on that. So okay. a couple of things I have actually worked on that are, that are all good to go. And then some things that are just, you know, fantasies right now, but, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's a long-winded way of saying, I don't know what my next project is going to be. <laughs> Out of curiosity, uh, approximately how many books did Ed Wood write? Uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I never thought about it. I've seen a few over the years at various shows. And as you say, they're usually pretty pricey, mm -hmm. you know, so. <laughs> I mean, know. I would say like a super conservative, I think there's, I don't know, like 50 that you can say he 100% definitely wrote, but I think that's a very low number. It's probably more like 200 or something wow. like that, <laughs> but, but that might be, I mean, I wish I had a number off the top of my head, but yeah, it's, 50 is it's good. <laughs> somewhere crazy like that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what's next for uh, this book? Uh, and do you have a copy of the book with you or are you just, you know, so you can hold it up and just want to see what. Yeah, I've got one. Here's the uh -huh. book. Um, this is the hardback. There's a paperback that um, is more affordable. And uh, um, what's next for it? I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I had a whole bunch of uh, promotional ideas uh, going into this, and not all of them have panned out. So, uh, you know, I've gotten it into a few bookstores, uh, 
you know, you can order it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or any number of websites. Uh, it's uh, available through, you know, Ingram distribution, which means pretty much any mom and pop bookstore can get it for you. Um, if you'd rather go through them than the big guys. Um, but uh, other than that, that's, uh, that's it. Well, do you have any uh, plans to, you know, table it at any monster movie conventions or anything in the next few months or anything like that? Uh, nothing definite. I would like to do something like that. A bunch of the avenues I've looked at weren't a hundred percent like, um, conducive to this specific book mm-hmm. um i mean you know just the name ed wood will get a little recognition but uh, among at the right kind of convention right uh but um but uh, no nothing definite yet i did enter it into a um i should have this in front of me i entered yeah. it into a like a local authors uh competition um but that's that's the biggest thing I, i've done so far fair enough okay all right. And you did kind of gloss over, you know, where to buy it and everything. But if uh, you want to repeat that, you can. And, but also, if somebody has any Ed Wood questions, Ed Wood information, or just wants to talk to you about film, old films, you know, uh, how do people get in touch with you? Well, what you can do is um, go to wpaulapel.com. Uh, that's W P A U L A P as in people, E L.com. Mm-hmm. And there's, um, a, a place to contact me on there. Um, and also on there, you can look at, uh, some information on the book and there's some of the media, like a newspaper article about the book, a couple YouTube videos, um, and some links on where to buy it, which, uh, you can get it at all the big places like Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Um, in Oregon, you can go to pals.com. I mean, pals yeah. will ship it to you anywhere. But, um, <laughs> but unfortunately, I've not got it into the actual building of pals yet. Um, hmm. We'll see about that. Yeah. Um, uh, or uh, because of the way it's distributed, um, pretty much any independent bookstore can order it for you. Um, so if you'd rather not go through, you know, Amazon, you can ask your local bookseller and it's likely in their system and they can likely get it for you. So that's nice. So the small, I, I, I'm from McMinnville, Oregon, um, and there's a tiny bookstore on third street there and they brought it in and sold a few copies. So that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to go up there. Not because of the books, uh, not because of your book, but because of a bookstore. There, there's certain bookstores I've you know, maybe in the next summer, you know, I've kind of, you know, as you have, you've been shut down during the pandemic. So there's a lot of places you haven't gone, but we finally went to Powell's again a couple months ago, first time in about four years. So Mm -hmm. just because of all that. So, Um, you know, something else I wanted to mention, uh, I kind of glossed over, I didn't quite get into it. I should have said actually, um, and when I mentioned Bob Blackburn, who knew Kathy Wood, uh, Edward's widow, and is uh, one of the heirs to Edward's estate, but little of it there is, um, he was instrumental. He's worked with um, Ben Omar of um, Bear Manor uh, mm-hmm. before to get some Edward short story compilations published. And he mentioned, uh, he hooked me up with the, the publisher. So um, aside from providing a foreword and being... Um, you know, a sounding board working on this. Um, I need to make sure to mention that he actually um, brought it to the publisher's attention as well. So, ah, okay. I kind of forgot that part, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, I didn't even ask that question because I assume, you know, people, uh, you know, well, how I got involved with Ben Omar is he saw some other article about a- animation that I wrote about underdog and stuff like that. And he says, hey, do you think you can expand this into a book? And I didn't even think about making it into a book, but I did. Nice. <laughs> and, you know, that that was 15 years ago. So here we are. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, well, um, I want to thank you, Paul, for being my special guest today. You know, it's like, again, the book is called I Watch Football Early the Day I Died. And I have to say this. I didn't say it earlier, but I wrote a book about Alvin and the Chipmunks 
and Ross Bagasarian Sr. And that's exactly the way he died. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. um, he was watching uh, the Super Bowl in 1972, and apparently he was smoking a big cigar, had a heart attack, and died during the oh, game. Wow. I don't know if he made it through the game, but, you know, that's the day he died. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so it made me think of that, I go, based on your title, so. Mm -hmm. anyway it was fun talking to you i hope you have other projects um i'm gonna have to check out some of your film reviews and things like that see what you have to say and hopefully you'll get a book out of it someday or something like that okay <laughs> i hope so all right well i think again thank you very much and this is mark arnold on fun ideas podcast and we will see you next time <laughs>